Okay, we have a three bar problem here, 26.41, uh, asking us to find the uh, electric field at this point P out here uh, that is created by a line charge on the y-axis. Um, and the way we're going to set this up is um, we'll take a little slice called dy, dy prime, and dy prime will have a charge of dq prime, and this is a uniformly charged line charge, so our um, uh, charge can be described as lambda, which equals q over l. And therefore, our charge emanating from this point is going to be lambda times dy prime, right? Because this is the charge per unit of length, and that's the unit of length, dy, that we're going to use. Okay? So, um, and if we were to look at this here, we would see that we get some charge from that point going out like this. So this isn't going to be uh, a simple problem to solve um, because we're not necessary. we don't have the sum of the forces isn't going to be um, just on the x or just the y direction. It's going to go in both, um, it's going to have components in both directions. Okay, so let's take a look at it. We have um, uh, the electric field at this point caused by dy is going to be, we'll call that de, and for the moment we're going to look at just the magnitude. de equals kq over um, over uh, r squared, and what's the distance here? It's going to be x squared plus, uh, I didn't put it in here, but we'll call this y. This will equal x squared plus y squared. Uh, it would be the square root squared, so we just can leave it just like this. Uh, oops, and this is not q, right? This is uh, supposed to be dq. And I can just go ahead and write dq as uh, lambda dy, right? Because we're not looking at the total charge on this point, we're looking at the charge at this point caused by this little sliver. So that would be dq. Okay, so I'll call that lambda dy prime. And this is going to have a uh, x and y component, so the x component we can describe as the cosine of this angle. Cosine of that angle adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So we have x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. And I'm going to write that as x squared plus y squared to the 1 half. Because it makes it easier for me to see how my um, exponents add. And the sine, now that's the x direction. And our sine is going to be, it's going to give us a negative value, right? Because we're going down, and in fact, all of these points are going to have a negative sine value. So this is going to be sine of theta is equal to negative, and uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, negative y over x squared plus y squared to the 1 half. So now, um, Uh, to write this one little tiny charge from that one little point in component form, we'll say DE is equal to K lambda DY prime over X squared plus Y squared times X over X squared plus Y squared uh, to the one half in the i hat direction uh, minus y over 
x squared plus y squared to the one half in the j hat direction. Okay, that's it. We're ready to now think about the entire sum of all of the charges. So to do that, we're going to integrate. We'll integrate this statement. And remember that uh, distributive law, this would get distributed in. Okay. And if I'm taking the integrate, if I'm taking the integral of the sum of two things, then I can just look at the integrals separately. Okay, so what I'll do first is I'll look at this integral here for the i hat component. Okay, so the uh, well, we're going to call this E now, because this is going to be the total E in the uh, X direction, is going to equal, and let's see what we've got here. When I multiply this in, I'm going to get um, K lambda dy X. Remember, X is a constant. For all of these points, the X value is always going to be the same y is going to be our variable. So I can pull the x out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pull out all my constants and uh, multiply these two together and put them on the right side of the integral. So I have constant k, I have lambda which is a constant, I have x which is a constant, um, and then that is going to be integrated from 0 to L, right, because our total length is L. of 1 over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves, right? x squared plus y squared to the 1 plus, uh, plus 1 half will equal 3 halves. And then uh, dy prime. OK, and you cannot solve this integral in this form. There are two ways to solve it. One is the um, not so fun way, and that would be called looking it up in the back of the book. That's kind of boring. There's an appendix though. Uh, appendix A will show you how to take an integral in this form and and solve it. Um, we're going to do it the um, the mathematical way, and so what we're going to do is we're going to change the um, integration from being from zero to L to integrating over theta equaling zero to theta being maximum. Okay, to do that. I want to rewrite this in terms of theta, and I want to rewrite dy in terms of theta. To do that, I will take the tangent of theta. Tangent is opposite over, uh, opposite over adjacent, so we have y over x. So tangent theta equals y over x. And then we can bring the x over here. And I can take the derivative of this now with respect to y, and I'll come up with a new equation that describes y in terms of x and theta. Okay, so this uh, the derivative of this will be x, because x is a constant, secant squared theta, d theta, because we have to uh, theta is now a function, and so we have to take the integral of uh, we have to take the derivative of theta, and that's going to equal dy prime. Okay, because this is y prime all the time. So we've now rewritten dy, and we can rewrite uh, the cos um, this by rewriting it in terms of cosine or sine. Um, cosine is going to work a lot better for us, though. Cosine of theta equals um, adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is x, and the hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus y squared. I'll just set that to the 1 half. Okay. Now I'm going to do two things at once just to save space on my little blackboard here. I'm going to move, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over x. That'll cancel this x and it'll move it down onto the other side below the cosine. Then I'm going to multiply the entire thing, or I'm going to raise the entire thing to the third power because what I'll get is this. Okay. This becomes 1 over x squared plus y squared to the 1 half to the third power, which will make it 1 over x squared plus y squared 
to the 3 halves. And this will be cosine cubed over x cubed. Okay, But look at what we've got. We've now rewritten this in terms of theta and x. Okay, So I can rewrite this entire equation now. And we notice that because we're switching to d theta right here from dy prime, we need to change the um, uh, integration from 0 to l to 0 to theta max. So we're going to rewrite this equation now as k lambda x integral from 0 to theta max, and I'll just call it theta m, of um, cosine cubed um, over x cubed times um, x times secant squared theta d theta. And let's see. This x will cancel with one of these x's. Okay, so I have x squared. This is a constant, so I'm going to bring it out. And it's going one of the x squareds will cancel with this because this is in the denominator. And so we'll end up with this over x. So let me just re start rewriting this here. We're going to get k lambda. This x cancels with one of those and it gets brought out. Get an x out here. 0 to theta max. And then we're going to get cosine cubed times secant squared. So, but what is secant squared? Well, the secant is the same as 1 over cosine. So secant squared is the same as 1 over cosine squared. So we have cosine cubed over cosine squared. Everything cancels uh, except one cosine. So we end up with cosine theta d theta. And that we can integrate really easily, right? What's that going to equal? That's going to equal um, a negative sign, right? Um, so we're going to get uh, k lambda over x uh, times cosine, oh, sorry, times sine. We'll just make it, put the negative sign up here, sine of theta from 0 to theta max. And when we evaluate this, um, what is the sine of theta max? Well, remember, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's going to be L over, um, we're going to get uh, negative k lambda over x times um, L over the square root of x squared plus y squared, right, because that's the hypotenuse. Oops, except y squared now is not um, y anymore, right? It's going to be L squared uh, minus, uh, and then L will go to 0, so we're going to have a 0 in the denominator. We're multiplying this. This is going to cancel out. Um, and so your x component is going to equal, um, well, let me just take a look here. For this. So we're going to get k lambda, well, sorry, lambda is q over l, right? times L over x square root of x squared plus y squared, oops, plus L squared. Okay, those are going to cancel out, and that is going to be your i hat. And it's actually positive, right? We know it's positive, so we're going to say positive in the i hat direction. I must have somewhere uh, misplaced a sign or done something wrong. So the answer for the i hat component will be k, q, x, square root of x squared plus l squared, i hat. OK? 
okay and uh, in the next video uh, we'll go over the other uh, derivative which is going to be uh, quite a bit easier